goal was to enforce border laws to get the job done and yep. it seems as though the trump administration and as my man guess who kept saying so. and now the it's the mandate of the people like i'm sorry but it is what it is y'all lost like terribly i mean it, i mean god damn it couldn't even have been close i can't even sit there and say oh we we're only 100k votes off this is a rigged and nobody i can't even say that i mean y'all got blown the hell out honestly i wonder what y'all gonna do from here to for to the january to january i mean i'm sorry but to the inauguration january 20th i wonder what y'all gonna do because i'm going to i ain't gonna lie and this may sound bad when i said but i'm gonna laugh my ass off if you try to pull a january 6 i mean y'all not built like that Y'all not been like that. I mean, y'all don't even believe in protests for real. I mean, look how much you guys were against January 6th. Imagine how stupid y'all be doing it, doing it yourself. So I, I know y'all not going to do that. So what is y'all going to do? Well, I know what you should do. Sit back and enjoy these four years, man, of prosperity. Let's go. Well, and I've heard some arguments from the left claiming it's impossible. It'll cost way too much money. We have seen one estimate that says it would cost $88 billion to deport a that million people a year. James, you are here trying to start problems in the, in the lesbian community, I see. I don't know if that's accurate or not. But Is that I, what American you know, taxpayers should expect? What that. price do you put on national so security? Is that worth it? Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. Hell yeah. It's going to cost. And you know, so funny. Oh my, bro, he was a savage. He was a savage. Carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. He's a savage. This man don't care. <laughs> oh my God oh my god he's ruthless we need him bro we need him. i need this guy we, we come on bro. go go ahead and send him to the border he's borders are now let's go he's a savage let's go and uh it's funny because you know black people get deported too yes yes the ones that come over here and commit crime they're gonna get their ass deported you're, you're right as they should the hell wrong with y'all what, what you think we don't know that black bro i'm at the for the haitians to get deported too you come on all, all the Africans who came over here crazy, like crazy as hell. Indians, I don't give a fuck. Goodbye. I don't know you. Hey, hey. You ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> it's like, you think I give a damn what color they is, man? They came in here illegally. I don't give a fuck. Get them out of here. It's going to cost billions upon billions. Now, billion actually, I, I, I'm feeling like my man right here. Like, you know what? This is my attitude about the border. This guy right here. With his mean ass mug and cold expression, I, that that's gonna be my attitude. Just they can be deported together, one big happy family. Yep, together. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Is that what is, it would? Senate, I'd say there's a decent chance that it is possible, and I've heard some arguments from the left claiming it's impossible. It'll cost way too much money. Really, it would cost way too much money, but y'all did it though. So why'd y'all do it knowing it would cost eighty-eight billion dollars? Then why'd y'all do it? Why'd y'all do it for seeing this? So tell me, hold on, y'all created a problem. Now y'all bitching about how much it would cost to fix it. That's you created the problem. Shut the fuck up. Bro, none of y'all Democrats should be talking about this border problem no more. Y'all created the problem. Shut up and let us fix it. I don't give a damn what the price is at this point. Y'all made the problem. Y'all wasn't even gonna try to fix it. Okay? Shut up. I want to talk about $88 billion. Yeah, we needed that for the goddamn border the last time. Y'all wanted to send most of it to Ukraine and Israel. Shut up. We have seen Just one estimate up. that says it would cost $88 billion to deport a million people a year. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Is that what American taxpayers should expect? What price do you put on national Ooh. security? Is that worth it? Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. Mark, I think you're being copied again. It's going to cost billions upon billions of dollars every single year if you want to deport a million illegals. And this counter argument, let me tell you, it's... And you're right, my immigrants vote for who let them in. Bro, I had a whole video of a whole bunch of immigrants stashed away in some hotel in Arizona going like, yeah, I'm voting for Kamala because Trump said he's going to kick us out day one. So if Trump get elected, I got to go. 
And I love it. I love it. I just love it. I, I just love it. They already know what's up. Trump 2024, you got to go. Out the dough. Blatantly idiotic. $88 billion. Is that the number she's... And make sure to put back the barbed wire when you're on your way out, man. Come on, bro. That shit costs money. Cited, yeah, well, you know, the cost of the border crisis alone is already at $150 billion in counting. And that might be with a very conservative lens or outlook. That's not counting the economic effects of Americans losing out on jobs. $150 billion is costing us. And then y'all want to complain about the $88 billion you take to fix it. It's like, bro, be quiet. <laughs> Or all the under the table money that isn't being taxed or recycled bro, domestically, but rather being sent bro, abroad. It's that's like your little kid breaking, bro. That's like your kid breaking something and then you got to clean it up and they're complaining about how you're cleaning it. Like, bro, like why you got to sweep? Why can't you just use a vacuum? It's like you damn near want to slap them. Like, are you serious? <laughs> you, you, you made this and I'm. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. It's not counting the crime crisis or what local states and counties are dealing mm -hmm. with. And so Democrats are stating it's going to cost $88 billion to deport 1 million illegal migrants. I don't know. Seems almost fiscally responsible, doesn't it? Of course, that's exactly what it is. And the implication that it's going to cost this every single year is ridiculous. Once the law has been enforced and once people realize that the law is being enforced, the problem is likely to dwindle I to a fraction of where it is today. In other words, it's not going to cost as much money to deal with it because you'll have have a ding 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 secure border and secure nation you know just like every well, other modern nation across the globe 88. you know the democrats try to play this emotional game but their policies and, on this and here's the thing though break that down democrats because y'all been coming up with bs ass numbers all year so now it's hard. i don't even know why we even believe the numbers y'all come up with so break that down how it costs 88 billion dollars a year and then they try to explain how that's not your fucking fault. I'm excuse my language, but that, I ain't gonna lie. That kind of did piss me off. I'm like, y'all have the nerve to complain about something that y'all let get bad for three point five years. There's no way, like, ain't no way, ain't no way. I'm hearing that. And shout out Hell Batman. Let's not forget the term anchor baby and get rid of that too. There should be no reason for an illegal immigrant being unaffected for breaking the law. Oh God. It's like, come on, now the anchor baby gotta go with you. As my man says, they can be deported together. I'm like, cold. And he's a savage. God damn it, Trump got the savages, man. We need the savages back you especially have caused untold suffering it can only be described as human catastrophe and now they're trying to make an argument about fiscal responsibility give me a break you guys are the ones creating a crisis that's running the country into debt i mean multiple compounding crises it's time to find a solution not fund endless bureaucracy see again this is what the democrats do they cause a crisis and then try to create a bloated bureaucratic department to continue dealing with that crisis or enabling the crisis what? look what they do with substance abuse they let it run I mean, rampant on the streets and then create big government entities where they're spending all kinds of money on a bunch of paper pushing I, bro i'm so thrown back by the audacity it's like i'm i, I can't it's unreal it's almost unreal it's like y'all create the problem that y'all want to bitch about the price that that's gonna take to fix the problem i'm i couldn't even imagine i couldn't even imagine doing that having that much audacity bro it's like what bureaucrats who have no oh my actual God, if incentive don't shut to solve up. the problem. Well, it's oh the same thing with the border, and you I just can't. can't give in to the that's emotional the same, manipulation, bro. the gaslighting, the finger-pointing, and accusations of fascism or cruelty. They are oh the cruel ones. God. They're cruel to the migrants with these false hopes of refugee claims and amnesty. Okay. Not to mention they send those migrants directly okay. to the belly of the beast, that being the cartel beast. Okay. And of course, the crisis they create is then cruel to the American okay. people and American taxpayers. The Democrats have lost the argument, and it seems like border security may oh finally be on the way. I think that's at least what it's looking like. I'd say probably the last thing that I need to be fully convinced on this matter is seeing this guy nominated as director of ICE. Then Bro, I swear to God, I'm going to go to sleep thinking about this point, and I'm, I'm a low-key probably going to wake up laughing tomorrow. Like, bro, they literally did that. <laughs> they literally caused a problem, then bitch about how we got to fix it. It's like, oh my God. This is probably the funniest thing these people have done. I ain't even gonna lie to you. This is gold. It's absolute. Oh my God, bro. I damn near want to tell it as a joke. I'm going to frame it as a joke to somebody. And, and then I'm going to actually tell them what the joke is based on. They're probably not going to believe me. It's like, there's just no way. It's like, they can't blame themselves for nothing, bro. 
it's really crazy. It's like, yo, y'all really can't blame yourselves for anything. No accountability at all. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's golden. And shout out Maya. That's the racketeering. That's what you're describing. Yup. <laughs> Ain't it crazy? Ain't it crazy? Oh my goodness, bro. That's it, it's it's wild. I actually, you know what? There's no humbleness. They have no humbleness. They literally have no chill. I'm, I'm, I'm thrown back. It's like, I can't believe it. It's like you would. It's almost. I, I'm lost for words. I'm just lost for words. It, it's just too funny. It's just too funny. Yeah, we got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So look, I may be wrong, but my takeaway from this oh, election, okay. if I was a leftist, what I would be focused on would be probably dialing back the extremism gauge, mm -hmm. you know, the crazy rhetoric. Yeah, I don't think they got that message. If you look at the arc of the Biden presidency, he was in really good shape until August of 2021. When Afghanistan happened, he went under 40, she went under 40, and they really lived there until the end of the press he's still there why because, i'll tell you why. because because he because he ran and told us he was that the adults were back in charge and that was the opposite yeah, they of were that. because and Donald you know and, and, child, and, and you know what else yeah. and you know what else he's a the fact right? that they wouldn't give well you that's what you're being a child like you guys just can't admit that well you're wrong and americans don't think he's a child they don't think he's a felon they don't think he's a great but actually they kind of see him as a hero so Sorry that most of America don't share y'all opinion or y'all hatred of Donald Trump. I'm sorry. You just have to sit there and cry about it and get over it. Give these uh, 13 service members' families the time A of bullshit, day. Dude. The time bullshit. of day. They I'm sorry. They I'm sorry, not. but Donald Trump hates Yo. veterans. He called them suckers and losers. He did. He absolutely <laughs> despite. Look, he has his whole life. He has his entire I know you're, life. I know you're super emotional. I, I just. Oh, yo, he lost his entire life. Bro, bro been up his entire life. Up his entire life. I mean, well, what are we saying here? Like, you can hate the man all you want, but like, why? Like, bro, think about how crazy this party is to the point where they're trying to say that, oh, he's not really a billionaire. Oh, he's not a successful businessman. It's like, they was, y'all was talking that crazy. So now that I'm thinking about it, Maybe y'all complaining about the problem, us fixing the problem that y'all created now makes more, a little bit more sense to me now. But I'm still going to laugh at it early in the morning when I wake up. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm still going to laugh at it when I wake up. I ain't going to lie. It's going to be a nice chuckle. He, because he ran and told us he was. I mean, even line up a joke for the people I work for. It. It's going to be funny. And shout out Zoloff. 70 more days and daddy's coming home. USA, man. On God, man. Hey, man, he's your daddy now, too, man. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> shout out trump boy i know y'all was mad about that one that the adults were back in charge and that was the opposite yeah, they of were that. because and Donald you know trump and, you, and, child, you, and you know what else yeah. and you know what else He's a the fact right? that they wouldn't give these uh 13 service members families the time <laughs> of day dude the time but, of day they i'm would sorry not. they I'm would sorry not. but donald trump hates veterans he called them suckers and losers he did no he, he didn't absolutely despite Look, he has his whole life he has his entire I know, you're, I know you're super emotional. I, I just... Of course I am. The, 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 I'm the, terrified. I'm, I'm telling you the political yes. reality is that when they made that decision... It doesn't matter when, when they, you don't admit... When they, they made, made that decision... Oh, you be you don't, okay. You don't admit, let me let deny a man, Chief John Kelly, a Marine. You deny... You say he you're lied. Still, you're still campaigning. You say it's he over, lied. Brother. Let me let it's not over. It's a, it's, it'll never be over. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's over. The war in Iraq, the Republican policies that led to those wars, the idea that, that Joe Biden made the final difficult decision in his administration and his military leaders. I mean, you guys live on the tippy top of both mountain if you actually think that 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 so many people think that the pull out of afghanistan was the the pivot point are you kidding me well, i mean well, I, I can read a it was one of them i can read a poll i guess you can't but the reality is when he made damn so petty insults when he made no 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 dog that was like one of the main reasons that yeah one of them was the, the pull out of afghanistan and how it got a lot of our soldiers well wounded and 13 killed and the fact that Kamala Harris or Joe Biden didn't show up for the funeral, but Trump did is even crazier. So, I mean, you want to talk about him calling like, uh, what you call it? Soldiers, suckers and losers, which he never did. But you want to talk about that? Well, what is it? What are you saying to the soldiers that you got killed and you didn't even show up to their, to their funeral? What are you calling them at the end of the day? What are you saying about their sacrifice at the end of the day? But you Democrats don't want to talk about that. Well, one of the reasons why y'all lost.
are it. so weak, dude. You have no idea. Like, I don't even understand if you hear yourself talking. <laughs> Look, I mean, you, can listen, la- you can laugh all you want, I'm but like, laughing. I can't read a chart. Like, it's he, just so, so, so hacky. It's so, so, reason, so uninteresting. Look, the reason un- that we, we brought this up is because <laughs> is so was from a democratic. I mean, the level of arrogance is just through the roof. And really, I thought his behavior was quite telling. This is what the interaction feels like. A bunch of posturing as an elitist Democrat who's right about literally everything. And then, of course, spend the entire debate dismissing everything your opponent says as totally crazy, and they get hyper offended when you get Mm -hmm. dunked on in the debate. Scott Jennings made a perfect point. This absolute clown does the typical feigning of outrage gaslighting. Are you seriously crazy enough to suggest that the Afghanistan withdrawal was a turning point for the Biden administration? What are you crazy? I'm an elitist Democrat. I know everything. Yes. I mean, disrespecting soldiers in that fashion is going to lose you some people. I mean, what did you think? And then Scott Jennings just goes, yeah, I can read a poll. And of course, he's not wrong. Joe Biden came into office with his freshly inaugurated presidential approval honeymoon, of course, bestowed on him by the media, an experience Trump certainly didn't receive during his first term in office. And then what happened shortly after Joe Biden's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan happened. And then, of course, case in point, total approval collapse. It's literally in the polls. We saw it. I remember it like it was yesterday. That was the first little bit that caused the avalanche of Biden Kamala Harris policy disasters that followed quickly after that. But of course, in typical leftist fashion, don't address the point being made, just signal outrage. Throw your handkerchief in the air and take the how dare you, how dare you approach. Mm. How dare you? It's just so typical. It's always the same kind of behaviors. This is what lost them the election. This elitist nonsense talking about all these Latino men somehow being out of their minds for voting for Donald Trump. Yes, we're all racist and misogynist because we didn't want to vote for the cackling woman. It's like it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But no, no, no. It's not about being misogynist. It's not about being racist. It's just she just wasn't the woman for the job. She had no real policies. She was a... thrown in out of nowhere didn't have to debate any point she didn't prove that she was the more dominant among her peers so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i kind of try to finesse a little too hard with this one yeah i kind of thought y'all can get anything past the american people you took us for like you know idiots and uninformed people well you were wrong they all just cut him off and basically lecture him for three minutes and for everybody out there wanting trump to pivot or change or somehow whatever you want him to do. He just, he just won a mandate from the American people to execute on the program that he laid out in this election. It wasn't particularly close. And I think he yep. put people in place who are going to do it. That's what the he people will go are after his for. enemies. I mean, that's, that's, they went after him. Now I'm not condoning him going after his enemies. I'm just saying though, you can't get mad when y'all go after a man the way y'all did. And then be like, oh, go after his enemies? I'm like, oh, what y'all scared about? Oh, because y'all know y'all did it to him. Now y'all scared he might do it to y'all. Oh, okay. But don't worry, CNN. Y'all safe. Y'all safe. That's not that's, what he ran on. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, he did. It is explicitly. That's not what he ran on. That's, that's, that's not what he ran on. One new got sent. Past week, he literally said that he was going to, to, to exact you, you, vengeance. You still don't understand how you lost. He ran on don't immigration. Don't say me. I'm not a Democrat. He ran on immigration. Yep. He ran on immigration. He ran, he ran on inflation. I'm not here paying to represent one of the many things he ran, things. Things. He ran on in addition ran, to He ran on events. the issues that people care about. He ran on Scott. the economy. He I, ran nobody's on saying that he didn't run on those things, but he Yo, also I'm ran weak, yeah, on hilarious. vengeance. Yes. He did also run on going after the, the people who went after him. Is that fair? He said, literally said, I am your retribution. The Biden crime family. Lock her up. All they do is. I mean, well, yeah. The Hunter Biden been out there committing crimes. Like, y'all did kind of put my man through a kangaroo court and trumped up and turned misdemeanors into felonies. So, yeah. Actually, yes. Yes. He does have every right to go after y'all asses, and y'all deserve it. And if he don't, then honestly, hey, it's through the grace of God, and I ain't even gonna be mad if he don't go after y'all. He honestly, just like you would Hillary, you just take the high road and just keep the main mission going, man. America first, and make America great again. That's all we care about. We don't care about y'all asses no more. Y'all done, y'all through, old news, and fake news. 
preach, regurgitate the party talking points, and don't let you speak. And of course, while emoting and feigning all kinds of outrage and emotion, in an effort to sway people, I don't have to win the argument. All I have to do is speak over my opponent and pretend as if what he's saying is so outrageous and so morally reprehensible, Bro. then I just automatically win. It's constant. I mean, here's another example. I'll play a short bit of it. I think there are a lot of families out there who don't believe boys should play girls sports they're not boys i'm not gonna listen to transphobia to be for real we hired him to go after the bad guys yeah that is true but i think more or less he's gonna keep the bad guys out instead of actually going after these guys in my honest opinion this is just my honest opinion now if he goes after them then fucking tastic i mean hallelujah but i think the best thing we can get is just not having them in any seat of power and that's the best thing we can honestly hope for because you know them going to jail fantastic but them also not having any type of access to power even better it's like that's also cool as well i mean i ain't even really tripping like you know let them live their life in shame be at this table i am not gonna listen to what you call a trans girl a boy are you gonna allow me to finish my explanation when you use a word that's a slur i'm gonna interrupt that's not how it is change they're not boys they're not boys they're not playing girls let's just reset for i'm not gonna sit there let's reset for a second because oh god oh god i definitely do hear your point maya because i'm like yeah it would be nice if he did just lock some of their asses up but uh let's be real if he start locking people up bro these libs are gonna go crazy I mean, I mean, you know what? Daz, he might start leaving the country. For, because he's going after people who actually did him wrong. They're going to think that they're, they're going to go after them too. And they ain't really done nothing but talk shit about them. And that ain't going to put him get you put in jail now. Look, this is a really heated issue, mm -hmm. right? And I'm sure, Michael, I know you. I know that you understand that hey, people yo. have different views on this. James I think Foley, out of respect yo. My for man. Jay, like, let's try to talk about this in a way that is respectful okay so let, let me rephrase this since i'm being targeted here i, I don't know no, no, just it's to be okay. clear you are it's, not being but targeted. i am but it's okay I, i'm specifically it's saying okay. that i know that you are not intending to be transphobic he should know that but, i'm not but, he wants but to I want you call you transphobic. But I want she don't ever let me on cnn i'm like i'm not tending to be in trans no 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 i'm trans intolerant i hate the word transphobic homophobic it's like it it don't even make sense. Like, I know I'm not scared of trans people. I'm not scared of gay people. I'm just homo intolerant. I'm trans intolerant. Let's call it. Let's let's change the word. Let, let's let let's start m making words, you know, mean what they're supposed to mean. Because phobic, no. Intolerant, a little. Well, oh, I'm not I'm not homo intolerant. I'm actually OK with gay people, but uh, trans intolerant. Yeah, yeah, I, got, I can vouch for that. I want to give you know. an opportunity. So, so the way to, no. regular people not. interpret it. Again, instead of talking about the ideas, it's just yell and shame my opponent into agreeing with me. The narcissism of the uh. left is something that honestly ought to be studied. It's this Karen type behavior. It's why they're so hell bent on censorship. It's about being an ideological enforcer, enforcing their control over what you can do and what you can say by means of social intimidation. And that in 2024 is exactly what voters rejected. I mean, out right rejected in this election the american people said nope you won't talk to us hey, that yo. way we're smart enough to <laughs> get what's yeah, going on and it's obvious it's becoming increasingly obvious that they're not paying attention they're not listening where you have again this like arrogant condescending group that says if you don't vote the way we do you're a fascist you're hitler you're hitler like it's 1933 again as jen rubin from the washington post tweeted yesterday during the attack on jews in amsterdam she's tweeting about how it's 1933 here let's look at europe for well, a second in some ways he is hitler like i'm sorry but that's just Bruh. <laughs> how because y'all just say it and i can't prove it but y'all just say it when y'all are more fascist didn't y'all act more fascist than anybody the way y'all showing out right now proves y'all y'all fascist when being told to their face this exact kind of rhetoric is the problem, the leftist responds with that exact kind of rhetoric in the exact described <clears throat> condescending dismissive manner that you might expect while quoting a bunch of fake news. I feel like we could probably just end it on that video, honestly. This elitist Democrat Karen nonsense is exactly what's losing them so many votes, and they just continue to act the exact same way. What an utter disaster. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the man that was actually pretty good when i ain't gonna lie shout out liberal hive mind now let's go to one of our favorite segments here at set and key media one of our new favorite segments shout out 
Lefties losing it again. Y'all gonna keep losing it, huh? Try to neutralize her her effectiveness. Now it's time for lefties losing it. The post-election analysis is underway, and we've talked about Republicans being blessed with some of the dumbest political opponents on God's green earth. And this next lefty is no exception. Here is Vanity Fair and MSNBC's uh, Molly Jong Fast blaming not just misogyny but institutional misogyny and sexy images for Shout out Kamala's sexy. downfall. Shout out institutional misogyny. Into a hey, like I said, why we voted for Trump? Because we're racist, sexist, and anti-gay. Remember, if they ask you why you vote for Trump, you're racist, sexist, and anti-gay. Out of the institutionalized misogyny as a way to try to neutralize her her effectiveness. So she's a super effective speaker, really galvanized voters in a really important way. And what the Trump campaign did, and I think ultimately they were able to, was they uh, flooded the internet with over-sexualized images of her. They spread lies huh? about her romantic history. That is so completely divorced from reality. But she did sleep with Willa Brown. We all know that. All of California knows it. What you talking about? Reality, it's unintentionally. We talking about our lady. <clears throat> actually claimed that Kamala is a really effective speaker. Really? The word salad queen who can't utter a coherent sentence to save herself. But Molly wasn't done yet. Listen to this bit of bat poop crazy analysis where she claims that Kamala's own campaign, which was hyper focused on securing the female vote, was actually anti women. And you'll remember, she ran this Nothing. rose campaign, right? A they got campaign it. that was largely sort of anti woman in a way. Look, it's only a matter of time before Molly joins the other <clears throat> crazy cat ladies and. Cuts Crazy her hair on Kevin. camera to protest Trump so. and democracy. They're giving up on America? Yeah. Also giving up on coloring this <laughs> hair. Because, right? <laughs> coloring my hair. Don't worry, baby girl. Don't worry. They're going to leave you alone. Nothing going to happen to y'all. Y'all be just fine. But it is funny, though, because that lady, <clears throat> no accountability. No accountability. They were even going far to blame Harris's party and be like, oh, they were anti-woman. I'm like, bro, they centered their whole shit around abortion and women's reproductive rights and women's health. It's like, what are y'all talking about? The problem was y'all went to women and gay. Two women and gay. Like, I, come on, y'all did it to yourselves. Like, come on, grow up here and take some accountability and, and, and take the L. It's okay. And as a woman, very excited for some, for Trump 2024 misogyny. Hey, I'm a weak as hell. Don't worry, man. It's the type of misogyny where we love women and we protect them. We make sure y'all don't do things that are too hard for y'all. Oh, God. The, the, the good misogyny. <laughs> Having my hair be long and luxurious. All that. Being skinny. Being hot. Being all the things that the patriarchy wants us to be. Because clearly, they don't give a about us. And I'm talking to you, too. Those of you ladies who have the internalized misogyny required to do what you did. Minorities who are so scared of a woman in power that you'd rather cozy up to the white man just in case some crumbs fall off his plate. Did you forget that you're a white lady? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's not even about him being white, but I mean, did you forget that you're white? Any crazy how they kind of show their racism as soon as you don't agree with them? I told you. And, then, and then I'm pretty sure most people kind of skate past this and be like, whoa, 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 that was kind of racist to say. Huh, I guess that's what y'all really think about us. And I mean, like, all right, well, what about the liberals who are the black liberals who are voting for Kamala? Aren't they kind of doing the same thing? So that you may eat from them. Yes, yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they were trying to do. Get get Kamala in there because she was going to help them eat off the rich. You know, go ahead and give them tax breaks and taxes the rich, even though the rich was going to take their job somewhere else and leave everybody broke. But what well, well, that was your idea, right? Right. To get the scraps off the rich, right? OK. I don't know how to work this thing, but I'm on my way. Oh, put to one side the dementedness there, the, the racism, the bold face racism. That's what I'm saying. Minorities who voted for racism is ill. Marvel at just how hopeless this woman is. She can't even work a clipper. A, a, a literal oh, monkey could work clippers. They're 
They're not hard to work out. Let's take a Yo. little trip down memory lane to just. A hey, thank you. She wasn't black. Hey, hey, she she chose the right joke because if she was black, she said a little monkey could work clippers. Oh my God! I thank God you and I, you in uh, Australia, sweetheart. Because <laughs> ain't no way. <laughs> but anyway, no. nah, though she ain't lying. She ain't lying. Just a few weeks ago, when supposed sensible lefty Bill Ma had convinced himself that Kamala was going to win and win comfortably. This is aged like a glass of milk. Am I going to worry about it? First of all, I'm not going to worry about it, Phil, because he's not going to win. First of all, <laughs> she's definitely going to win the popular vote, as Democrats almost always do now. She, but I think she will win. Oh, dear. How wrong can you be, Bill? You want to pretend you're the critical thinker, the leftist who isn't protected from reality, but your Trump derangement syndrome has you uttering absurdities like this. I hope Dr Phil stepped in with a prescription after this rant about Trump's supporters. His followers, I think, will... will I don't think their heart will really be in it as it was in 2020. Some of them, there's lots of people who will always be in the bunker with Mrs. Goebbels taking the poison and giving the poison to the children because it's better than living in a world without national socialism. Dr. Phil's face says it all. This dude is beyond help. Bill Maher may occasionally say something sensible, essentially copying what conservatives have said for years, what we've said when it actually mattered, but in the end, he's just another lefty losing it like this dude on CNN having a full-blown tantrum because a conservative on the panel, Shamichael Singleton, actually used accurate language to describe boys as boys. There are a lot hmm. of families out there who don't believe boys should play girl sports. They're not boys. Uh, no, no, I'm no, not no, going to no, listen no, to transphobia no, at this table. That's, that's I am not, not going to listen to trans girl a boy. Are you going to allow me to finish my explanation? You, 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 a trans, you, bro. You know, I look at him and be like, "No, nah, you better listen to this transphobia or this trans intolerance." No, 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 no. We're going to reframe it. Yeah, you going to listen to this trans intolerance? Yes. It is a bit weird that we are trying to turn little kids into well, try uh, well. The opposite gender. Like, why are we trying to turn little girls into boys? Why are we trying to turn little boys into girls? Like, what the hell are we doing? Why are we trying to groom kids?